This is the big cheat. You can make readers immerse themselves. I want to talk about how to make your writing immersive because I don't think there's any greater compliment that a writer can receive than I got totally lost in your book. That's definitely the effect that I aim for when I'm writing stories. I want readers to feel like the world's closed off a little bit and then when they finish reading I want them to have that weird feeling like when you leave the cinema and it feels strange that it's still light outside. But how do you do that? A lot of it I think is indefinable writing magic but I do have a few practical tips, things that work for me, so let's talk about them. So something I think that people often expect is that detail is what creates immersion. You know, give people as much information as you can about your story so that the image that they formulate in their mind's eye about it is as rich and detailed as possible. That might work for some writers and for some readers, but it doesn't really work for me whether I'm writing or reading. In fact, my approach to writing an immersive story is arguably easier on writers because it doesn't involve adding anything to the writing. It's actually about removing things. That might not make that much sense by itself, so let's have a look at some example writing and I'll explain a bit more about what I mean. Kim thought fondly about the old table that had been in their dining room growing up. She didn't know if it had been sold, but she would have been sad if it had. That would mean it could be anywhere across the continent by now, which would mean she would never see it again. She would never sit around it with her parents and grandparents and sisters again. Okay, it's not awful writing, but it really isn't immersive. It's definitely not the type of writing I feel like I could get lost in. You already know I'm not going to add anything to the story to create immersion, so what am I going to remove from it that'll bring the reader closer? Here's where I'd start. Kim thought fondly. I'd remove the adverb fondly. Firstly, if we consider the paragraph as a whole, by the time the reader's read the whole thing, they have enough information to make a judgement about how Kim feels about the table themselves. And not having that confirmed initially isn't going to be confusing to the reader, it's not going to make them struggle to comprehend the rest of the paragraph. Adverbs generally are really easy targets for writing advice. You always hear, strip them out, get rid of them, and I do agree with that for the most part. They do have their place, I'm not saying never use them, but I definitely try to keep them to a minimum. Adverbs are just one of those parts of the fabric of a book where the writer's desk lamp just shines right through. And any essence or shadow of the writer within the pages of the book is going to break or at least reduce immersion. It's like we're sitting right next to a reader while they read. When this happens to me, I feel more aware that I'm reading a book and I feel as though someone is guiding me through it. I'd remove the word fondly because it's occupying space that your reader's intuition or imagination can fill. By saying Kim thought fondly, we're telling the reader exactly how to interpret that action of Kim thinking. We're removing any processing from the reader. If it wasn't there, and the reader was to continue to read ahead, they'd be able to make up their own mind about how they feel, about how Kim feels. And how would they do that? By being a person, by even subconsciously placing themselves in Kim's situation based on events or experiences from their own life. And they might not even have an exact name for that feeling, even if they've had it themselves, because feelings are indescribable. So to just say fondly, as is the case with all words, doesn't do that feeling justice, because it's never going to reproduce it in the same way that our minds and our experiences can. Connect the characters and the narrative of a story with the reader's real life experiences and I think that's one way at least to create immersion. It causes this effect where the story feels blurred around the edges and readers feel like they're halfway into that and halfway out of the real world. So that's why I take out that word fondly first of all, just allowing space for readers to interpret parts of the story that don't really affect the direction of it but will affect how the reader absorbs it. But what about the rest of the passage? How else can we make it immersive while at the same time arguably easier to write? A bit further on, it mentions how Kim might feel if the table had been sold. In fact, it directly says she would be sad. Again, I think that context will tell us that by the time we reach the end of the paragraph without having to overtly say it. And also, I wish it was that easy for us writers to make a reader feel something, make a reader feel sad just by saying this character is sad. Actually, I don't wish that at all, because that would take all the skill and mystery 
out of writing. The point is, it isn't that simple. It takes a lot more than just telling them how a character feels in order for them to feel immersed by it. For real immersion and emotional impact, I think the writing has to contain what feels like a connection to the reader's real life. And the great thing is, as a writer, I know about this and I try to use it in my own writing, but then when I read, it absolutely still works on me. I still feel immersed. It's partly the magic of writing, I'm sure, but it's partly the fact that even fiction is always somehow rooted in truth. So if I hadn't said Kim would feel sad, the circumstances would be more open for a writer to empathise in their own way with what had happened. That's always going to carry more weight. And every single reader, every single person, is going to know their own exact strain of sadness. And it's going to be way easier for them to find themselves immersed in that than just the word sad. But there's one more thing I'd do to this paragraph to try to increase the potential for immersion. I'd remove the part specifying that she wouldn't see the table again. And there's a really specific reason I'd do that. And when I figured out something was wrong with it and that it didn't feel immersive, it felt like something clicked for me. I think what stood out in a bad way about this is that even though it's a hypothetical, she doesn't know yet if the table's even been sold, it's still written in a way that feels like all of that has already been decided. And it feels like that's what the writer thinks happened. It feels like the writer's saying, if this were to happen, and it did by the way, this is how she would feel about it. This exact way is how she would feel about it. Just so you know, this is the answer. And that just makes it feel like the story's really closed off and it denies the reader an opportunity to imagine for themselves. It's the writer writing ahead into the future, sewing up a loose end that doesn't need to be sewn up. It feels like it, an overextension of the writer's influence. If we want a story to feel immersive at all, then a reader has to be able to feel involved in some way and not just a passive observer. We do that by letting them create parts of the story for themselves, how they see it, and deprioritizing what we see as a writer. Those phrases that I removed are directions, really, and not directions for the story, they're directions for the reader. But readers are willful, they're going to read a story however they want, and I think the best thing to do is to step back as writers and let them do that so that they can find ways to relate to our story. That's what's going to lead them to feel immersed in it. When I read a story that's really specific and concrete and nothing's up for debate, I find there's only so much I can relate to the characters and only so much interest I'll have in the story and definitely only so much immersion I'll feel. It's like I can feel the author standing over my shoulder guiding me to exactly what they want me to see. It's like being marched around a museum and told only to look at certain points. It's just not conducive to the way every reader is gonna read your story and how every reader is gonna to try to enjoy it in their own way. And of course, I started off by writing like that. I think most people do. And if you read that paragraph and you did feel immersed by it or you would feel immersed by a longer story told in that way, then that's absolutely fine. There is no I'm right and you're wrong here, I'm just talking preference. Your opinion and how you write and how you read is totally valid, whatever the case, and it's okay that we disagree. But if you didn't really feel immersed by that paragraph and it didn't really have much of an effect on you, here's the paragraph with all of those bits stripped out. I think it's more immersive, but you can decide for yourself. Kim thought about the old table that had been in their dining room growing up. It had probably been sold now to some other family in some other place. They probably never sit around it altogether again. With this version, I haven't told you as readers how to feel, but I think there's still as much sadness and loss and nostalgia as there was before, if not more. There's less certainty, fewer facts, and more room for interpretation. I think this makes Kim's thoughts feel a bit more private, as though they're a window into something that's a bit more personal than just being told she feels sad or she thought fondly. This is one of those concepts that's really hard to explain well, I think. And of course, like all things writing, it won't apply to every story and every reader, and nor should it. But this is definitely the way I like to write. I like to prioritise the story and not what I want readers to think about it. That's always what makes me feel immersed when I read. It's about giving readers the opportunity and the space to make the story their own. This is the big cheat. You can make readers immerse themselves. I try to let them imagine things in ways that will appeal to them most and hook them the most. And most importantly, to speak to them the clearest. 
There are obvious limits. I can't just start selling empty notebooks saying, here's a novel, you decide what happens. Obviously, you can't do that. But what I can do is when I want to turn a reader's head towards something really specific or I want to raise a hand and point at something to make sure they don't miss it, I can just resist the temptation instead. Step back and let them connect with the story in the way that they want to. That, to me, is immersion. To read my writing or to check out my flash fiction course, here's a link to my website. As always, thank you so much for watching and happy writing. Thank you.